Greetings humans, I'm Dale and today we're going to have a look at creating a realistic looking sun star sunburst, whatever you want to call it. Now, before I jump into the tutorial, I want to give you some context. Uh, so the best way to do a sun star is in the field, so out there capturing it. What is a sun star? So essentially what happens is the light from your camera hits the aperture blades or diaphragm that's inside. And what that does is it creates a series of kind of spikes. Uh, and those spikes can be used to emphasize light. It can do a whole bunch of things in photography. Now, Erin Babnik, uh, who's a pretty cool photographer, she's got a uh, tutorial on vis uh, visual wilderness that kind of breaks down how to do a sun star in landscape photography uh, in the field talking about how the number of blades and stuff like that depends on the f-stop, the aperture, all these kind of things. Super, super helpful. Uh, I'll leave that link below. Okay, so a little bit of context why I wanted to create a artificial sun star. So I had this image here and I made two mistakes. Number one, I didn't shoot for a sun star. Usually what you can do with a sun star is you can set up the camera, put your thumb kind of in front of the star, let it kind of flare out. Um, I didn't do that. I was too excited uh, with this light that was happening and I was just shooting like crazy. Uh, the other thing that I did as well is I, earlier that day, while I was hiking to this specific spot, I accidentally changed uh, my camera settings using some random shortcut, I don't even know why it exists, uh, from shooting in RAW to shooting in JPEG. So the images that I would usually have to kind of modify and mask and stuff like that in order to create something like a sun star, I didn't have at all. So that's the reason why we have to create an artificial one. Let's jump into it. First thing we're gonna do is gonna create a new Photoshop document. We're going to make it 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels, uh, resolution 300 pixels per inch, sRGB, color profile, everything that you can see there. So create those. Now, uh, before I jump into it, I'm going to do my best to kind of work with Mac and PC. So um, I'm going to call out shortcuts uh, and hopefully they should work for both. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill this layer with black. Now. Uh, down here on the left hand side you've got uh, two little boxes, generally one's filled with white, one's filled with black, or it could be another colour. If you press X you can kind of switch between those there. What, you, what we want is we want the black to be at the back. So we just make sure it's at the back and then we go Command or Control Delete while selecting a layer and it fills it full of black. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Filter we're going to go Render and then Lens Flare. Now, uh, at this point, we're going to choose the 35mm Prime. Brightness, I'm going to go 105. Uh, and then with this little box here, grab the center of it or wherever that's placed. Sometimes it's somewhere else. And just drag it to the right-hand side. Uh, dragging into the right-hand side kind of breaks up the elements. So you can see the light bit on the right-hand side, kind of blue in the middle and then green on the left-hand side. So we go OK. Now, all we really want is this kind of center bit here on the right-hand side. So we're going to select our circular marquee tool. So if you don't have it selected up there, you can just hold down and then select the elliptical marquee tool, not circular. Uh, now we're going to click in the middle, holding down Alt or Option. And what that's going to do is it's going to drag the selection from the middle, holding down Shift. It's going to drag it proportionally. So if I hold down and pull out, we want it just about there. That's made that selection. Now the next, the next thing we do is we need to kind of feather it out a little bit. So we're going to go to selection, select and mask. Under global refinements here on the right hand side, we're going to put the feather to 15 pixels and go OK. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to pull out that selection and put it on the layer above. So to do that, you go Control or Command J. So what that's done is it's pulled it out and put it on a separate layer. Now we can get rid of that old layer. Then we're going to move this guy into the middle. So using the Move tool, 
gonna put him roughly in the center and then we're gonna create a new layer. Fill that with black, so Command or Control Delete, making sure that the black is uh, selected at the back here. Drag that to the bottom. Now selecting this top layer here, we're gonna go uh, Command or Control T. So it's gonna free transform it, so we're gonna be able to kind of squish it and move it around. Uh, and then holding down Alt or Option and Shift again, we kind of squeeze it around. So we wanna squeeze it just like this. Go down a little bit, just to a point, and then go enter. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select these two layers. So selecting that top layer and then the bottom one while holding down shift, right clicking and go merge layers. Okay, this is the basis. Now, the question here is where do we go? In what context, what kind of sunburst or sunstar or whatever do we want? And that's where you look at other photographers. So here's a bunch of pretty cool photographers and their kind of breakdown um, or their, their sun stars. Uh, I'd say all of these are probably done in the field within camera, um, but it's a really kind of helpful thing to work out how many points we want on the sun star and kind of in what context or what kind of look do we want. Now, if you count the points, so uh, when I count the points, I count like that as a point and that as a point, not each of the individual ones there. This is what we end up with. I spent some time counting them. Now in the context of uh, this image here, the one that probably works the most is this guy here. So we're gonna create eight kind of cross hatches. Uh, what I've noticed here as well is a lot of it kind of seems to be um, not very far across. So by that, I mean it's kind of in a hourglass shape. So when you look at them, it's kind of in that shape. There's not much on the right-hand side here and there's, uh, well, on the left-hand side, and there's not much on the right-hand side either. So we keep that in mind. So... Let's do this. Let's jump back into the layer that we're in. We're going to duplicate that. So holding down Command or Control uh, J. And then we're gonna change that blend mode. So this guy just here, we just click on it and we change the blend mode to lighten. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of move these around to where we want them uh, and kind of stack them on top of each other. So uh, if we go Command or Control T, free transform, we can start kind of stacking these guys. So we can just kind of move them around a little bit. So there's one there. I'm gonna do the same thing uh, with this layer here. So Command or Control J and Command or Control T. And then we're just gonna kind of move them around. So making sure that there is this kind of center bit here where everything kind of converges in the middle. So if we just move that to the middle there. Now keeping true to uh, what we saw here, I'm gonna remove that one that goes across the middle section and kind of shift it up. So it kind of flares up. So I'm just gonna continue moving these guys around. What are we up to now? So we're up to Four. Yep, and we'll move that guy as well. You, you can also get to the transform tool by going edit, transform, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm kind of getting used to using shortcuts and stuff like that, so within context, it works. So clicking the top one again, Command J, Command or Control. I'm gonna kind of move these guys around. So what are we at now? We're at two, three, four, five. Keep going. Six. I might make this one go across. What we can do later is um, we can mask out sections that we don't want. Seven. There we go. 
So just kind of gradually pulling these guys around. And one more. So we got eight. Now, it doesn't look like much at the moment, but bear with me. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all these layers and kind of stamp them together. So if you hold down the top one, press shift, click the bottom one, right click and go merge layers. So they're all kind of merged um, together. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create another layer. We're going to fill it with blacks. So command or control delete, making sure blacks at the back. Filter, render, lens layer. Uh, this time we're gonna go for the 50 to 300 zoom. Brightness, we're gonna put it to 100. And then we're gonna move it all the way into the middle. So everything's kind of lined up there. Okay, so similar to before, we're gonna use the elliptical marquee tool. So holding down Alt or Option and Shift again, bringing it from the center uh, and then going uh, select, select and mask. Don't freak about, don't freak out with what's going on here. Essentially what it's doing is it's showing, uh, showing all the layers kind of stacked on top of each other. Uh, but anyway, the feather, we're gonna put the feather at about, about 20. Let's have a look here. Let's make the feather about 60 and go okay. Uh, and then as before, go Command or Control J to kind of pull it up onto the next layer. Get rid of that layer there. And then we're gonna use the Move tool to kind of center this guy in the middle. Once we've done that, we can change the blend mode, uh, which is in normal, to screen. And as you can see there, it's kind of flaring out a little bit. When you look at um, most of these guys here, you can see kind of in the center, area it's kind of modeled together and that's what we're doing here so we've got that guy there now what we're going to do is we're going to merge these guys together again so selecting both holding down shift right click merge layers then we're going to duplicate this guy so command or control j and then we're going to go filter blur radial blur uh, just for the top one, we're going to make it zoom, uh, mount 70 thereabouts, press OK. OK, awesome. So we're, we're kind of getting that little merge together, but we're not quite there. Uh, now, the next thing we're going to do this layer is we're going to go filter, sharpen, unsharpen mask. It's kind of at this point where things will really, as you can see, kind of squeeze together. So you can go pretty heavy with this guy. So about 400 pixels, thereabouts. As you can see, like the more you do, the more it kind of squishes together, which is great. The amount, yeah, about 50. Uh, and then we go, okay. Now, what we're gonna do here is we kind of only really want the center bit at this point uh, of this specific layer. So we're gonna mask it out. So clicking this little guy here, this little button here, it's gonna create a mask. So white reveals, black conceals. Um, it'll make sense in a moment. If you press B for brush, it's gonna bring up the brush. And then we're gonna change the size of the brush a little bit more, a little bit more hardness we'll put down. Uh, at the moment it's white, so it's seeing everything on that layer. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start hiding things. So making sure that black is the primary, so pressing X as we did before, switching these layers here, still with brush, and we're just gonna brush. So literally just clicking, you can see here that it's kind of doing its thing. Opacity I'm gonna put up probably to about 70% thereabouts. And then we're just going to feather Feather it in a little bit there. Okay, a little bit more at these points here. So I'm gonna go all the way there. Okay, so uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna merge these layers together. So holding down shift, clicking both, right clicking and going merge layers. 
And then we're gonna put a little bit of a blur on it. So Gaussian blur, we're gonna make it probably 1.5 pixels. Okay, at the moment it's kind of all geometric and kind of straight. So we're gonna play around with the warp a little bit. So selecting the layer, going edit, transform, warp, and then coming out a little bit. So uh, to zoom in and out on the keyboard, you can go command or control uh, minus or plus. So I'm just going minus at the moment. Just kind of bring in these edges and you can see it's kind of playing around with the shape of it a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Okay, pressing enter once you're done. And then we're gonna bring this into the image. So uh, com uh, control or command A to select all, com control or command C. Uh, and then we're just gonna go create a new layer in here and then command or control V. And then we're gonna bring it in. Yeah, forget about that. Okay, oh, look at that, that looks, that looks, oh, that's incredible, oh my goodness. We're gonna get rid of that black, easy. We're gonna change, you ready? We're gonna change from normal to screen. And what that'll do essentially is it'll just show the light bits of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Command or Control T, and then just kind of bring in, bring it in a little bit more. So let's have a look here. So we've brought that into the middle. We're just gonna go back to our reference image. So the one that we're looking at, which is this guy here. And then we're gonna play around with it a little bit. So at this point, it, it obviously doesn't look um, incredible. So what we're gonna do is we're going to play around with it a little bit more. So we're gonna go filter uh, we're gonna go filter, blur, uh, radial blur again. Just gonna bring it up. So let's see what we do when we do 40, zoom, quality good. It's doing its thing, it's thinking. There we go, so that's starting to work a little bit. Uh, let's do it again. So 40 was probably too much. So blur, radial blur. Uh, with the radial blur as well, it says blur center. Similar to when you're doing the, um, uh, the lens flare and stuff like that, you can kind of drag this guy um, into the center there. So making sure that X is in the center. Zoom, I'm gonna go about 30. Let's see what 30 does. 30 should be enough. Mm. Ah, let's go down a little bit more. So blur, radial blur, and let's make it 15. What you'll find is you have to play around with it because it depends on the context of the image, kind of how well it works. So for example, like that's not very um, kind of out there. You can't kind of distinctly see each of the spikes. Whereas you look at something like um, this, which was taken in a forest, you can obviously see um, see a lot or even uh, stuff like up the top here with the seascapes and stuff like that. Uh, you can see some of those. The other thing to note here as well is um, this, this guy here, um, a lot of it's on the bottom section because uh, the bottom is um, the horizon. So what's happened is it's kind of hit the horizon and then it's sprayed out. You can't see much up the top. So we're going to kind of keep that in mind when looking at this. And then we're going to mask out that section there. So selecting the layer, holding down mask. B for brush. As before, white reveals, black conceals. Making sure black is the primary uh, color here. The opacity we're gonna put down a little bit because you still kind of want to see it a little bit. Uh, opacity 35. And then we're gonna just brush over that section there and then a little bit down here. So the opacity we're gonna bring down a little bit for here. There we go. 
Let's change the size of it as well. So edit, transform, scale, or command or control T. Let's bring it up a little bit more. So you always make sure that white bits in the center there. And then clicking on the mask again, B for brush. We're just gonna play around with it a little bit more. That's it there. Bring it back a little bit more. Okay, and finally, uh, what we're going to do to try and help it kind of get in with the images, we're going to uh, change the hue or saturation of it, get it to kind of fit more with the existing sun that's there. So, creating a new fill or adjustment layer down here, going hue slash saturation, holding down Alt and just clicking between the layers. Uh, essentially what this is doing is it's just making sure that the adjustments that are made there aren't made to the whole image, but are made to just the uh, sun star or, or whatever that we want there. Double click here. That should bring up this guy. And we're just gonna zoom in. Cause that you can, as you can see at the moment, it's kind of a little bit purple. So we're going to shift this until it kind of gets to where we want it to be. Go. Just keeping an eye on it. Okay, there we go. Now it does say it's blue here, but for some reason it's kind of opposite day and it's uh, doing the opposite. Saturation, bring the saturation up a little bit. Uh, probably not too much, plus five. There we go, that's perfect. Command or control zero to look at the whole image again. Mask a little bit more for this center section here. And there we have it. So fairly kind of subtle, um, but I think it adds to the image. So uh, for example, here we go. Let's have a look at it before and after. So this is uh, before. So as you can see, I still kind of, I kind of have a sun star going on, but it's not, not 100%. Uh, and then here's the one that we've created kind of sitting on there, kind of adds a little bit more to it, uh, gives a little bit more context uh, and is helpful. Hopefully this tutorial is helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if it was, if you had any questions, ask them there as well. Um, preference would be to create sun stars um, in the field just because it's easier and more accurate and stuff like that. But I think this is a really kind of, interesting way to kind of add a little bit more to your images. Um, just adds a little bit of flair to it. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.